guys, how's it going? I'm DK. I'm Rizzo. And I'm Zero. Today in Anime Reaction, watch the 12th episode of Recreators. If you want to check out our reaction to the 12th episode of Recreators, hit that link in the description below. And be sure to give us feedback in the comment section because we love hearing from you. And as always, if you like what you see, subscribe to Otaku Saga and don't forget to like and share our videos. And, and thanks, thanks for, for watching. watching. So, basically wrapping up that meeting with uh, all the creators and the government and so tough. We also get a... Uh, I, I really like the interaction that we started off with, with uh, Altair, no, not Altair, um, Alistaria and Blitzer. Oh. That was pretty interesting. In, in the crater post-Mamika. <laughs> 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 Poor Mamika. Yeah. Here, there, and everywhere. Yeah. But, um, yeah, yeah, I, I really like that, too, where you start to see, I think... Um, Alistaria is starting to come around, I guess. Mm -hmm. I think you really started to see that come around in the last couple episodes, though. Well, slowly but surely. But after a little interrogation of her creator, uh, I think it's all more or less confirmed she's going to switch sides. Well, or die trying. Or, or die trying. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest here. Yeah, Death Flags. Because it was actually, it was, it was said by uh, Blitz, Blitzer? Blitz. Blitz that um, you know he should have killed her when she when he had the chance. That's true. But I'll tell you, it kind of dissuades him though. Uh, I think maybe uh, Blitz killing Alice would have uh, caused their whole party to be rejected from the world because it would have been too much of a big change at once. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's basically what Altair was telling him. But yeah. um, and Altair is definitely planning for the long haul. And being as we have a whole core to go, it's you know, it's the way it ought to be. Yeah. When we finally figure out how Altair's powers work. She was the product of fan fiction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I, I think I think for her, because she was never an official release, mm. that's why I think it's a lot more flexible for her to be, for her to have powers added. Yeah, a, bl a blank slate. But because she was always just a fan creation... Uh, when when Setsuna died, it basically like I guess transferred the power, uh, power to of her fans. the creation to the fans. Anyone who created a, a work based in her in her story. That was a weird video, but right. Yeah, it was strange. Why would anybody think? Hey, let's have her use a Tommy gun as a violin and a sword as the violin bow. I thought it was a burp gun. Whatever it was, whatever it is, it's. Yeah. I, yeah, I thought it was a Tommy gun. Yeah. But uh, yeah, regardless, regardless, let's have her let's have her use a machine gun and a sword to play it like a violin and copy things. Copy creepy little doll things. Weird. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty weird. Well, it's tame for Japan, though. <laughs> Let's be honest. I actually, um... I, I actually wonder, like... Who's actually doing these fan fictions? Like, who actually has... Is she just that popular? Well, of she was a like... Thing? Shimazaki did, uh... Well, that was, didn't she, like... Hmm. I don't know, not Shimazaki, Altair. She was quite the popular character. Because that original video that uh, Shimazaki did with that producer, you know, garnered quite a lot of attention. And while yeah. Shimazaki herself had a lot of detractors, I imagine she still had a shit ton of fans. Hmm. Implied twist, it's Sota. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust him at this point, so... Could yeah, well that, be. that'd be fucked if he, like, comes clean, quote-unquote, now, and then he's revealed, oh, yeah, actually, I created Altair anyway, and I'm still holding that true probably for our entire core. That would be a very sinister, but that would be a really nasty plot twist. I don't think that... I, I, don't, uh, think so, I, I don't think... I don't With think as much so. emotion as Sota gave out this episode... Yeah. <sighs> That, that would be an evil plot twist of George R. R. Martin proportions. 
Um, but um, <laughs> I like the uh, I guess talk that Elisteria had with her creator. Uh, I think you mean interrogation. She dangled him from a flying Pegasus. Come on now. <laughs> But um, ah, true. Yeah, I just I, I like I like how uh, Alistaria is starting to come to I guess an understanding with her creator instead of just outright hating the bastard. Though he is definitely, uh, unfortunately for Alistaria, he is definitely one of those people who just is in it for the money, for to make ends meet, basically. Yeah. He, he doesn't he doesn't care about the story the same way that like Celestia's um, creator cares about his story it's actually really weird that uh, the creator the way that the creator responded I thought was a little bit more interesting than that because like one of the questions was you know do you actually want to, to save my world and he was like that's up to you like I I don't really have a play in that. That is all you. Yeah. That is kind of interesting, because normally well, it would be I like, mean, hmm, it would I mean, be a right Technically, decision. he could end up being one of those bastards that does downer endings, and basically, at the end of the story, the you know the world ends up being destroyed anyway. But he does prove in this that he's not one of those people. Well, I think he's not one of those people in this situation. Normally, a, a character you create won't come to life and dang you from a Pegasus asking you that question like that with life or death consequences. Normally, be like a fan, you know, at like, say, a convention panel asking you something like that, and I imagine he'd answer differently. Try to avoid the question altogether. So it's kind of it's strange how he adapted to this new, bizarre situation in answering that question. Yeah. Um, and I, I like that. I, I like that little interaction they had right at the end, where he's like, "You know, I kind of forgot how you smiled." Hmm. He probably hasn't drawn it in a while, right? Sure, he probably because <laughs> that story it. sounds really heavy. <laughs> yeah, he probably just you know writes the story and doesn't really look at the illustrations the illustrators do or read his own work. No, yeah. he's a manga artist. He's, oh, not, he's manga, not, not yeah, not he's a not a light novel, novel artist oh. or uh, author, he's a manga artist. Uh -huh. So well, if you looked at the 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 setup that they gave him in his cell, it was for That's drawing. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um uh, I was going to go somewhere. All right, I actually wonder, like, how does he come up with his stories if he's not really thinking so far ahead that he doesn't really know how it's ending? I don't know. It could be just the fact that the stories run a lot longer than he expected it to. I don't know, maybe. Again, it's probably adaptation. If he's a manga cop, then. Yeah, yeah well, I mean, just... yeah, if he's a mangaka and basically his story is like a week to week thing, yeah. or maybe even like a monthly release, just digs down and just pulls a story out of thin air. Or yeah, he, he's probably more, he plans out story arcs that if he got canceled, if his series got canceled, then he could finish off the arc and write like a couple of chapters as an epilogue that would that would be kind of tie up the yeah that would kind of tie up the story rather than trying to plan out for this whole big overarching story oh uh, that actually makes sense what would the characters do rather than what what he wants them to do that's actually pretty interesting hmm. also i think that, that uh ryu say i think that's entirely your own your own perspective the world actually makes a lot of sense it's all based on, you know, the, uh, it's all based on popular opinion. How, uh, yeah, but fan input, basically? Yeah. How do, you know, the, uh, the whole, uh, I'll go ahead and roll into what, what comes out, what we, the other part that we get, uh, introduced to. The cage of, uh, oh, yeah. Altair. Meteor is Yeah, ba set up. basically, the government is going to create the ultimate crossover. Official crossover between the, all these series. Yep. To get all the creators, their publishers and editors and everything, 
create an ultimate crossover story in which Altair's powers are limited and then the rest of the creations attack her in mass. Um, yeah, and, and I love that. So if they can get if they can get all these creators of the characters that are actually alive, mm-hmm. rework a spin-off series to combine all of these stories and at the same time give buffs give magical powers, etc., etc., to basically, all these... Basically make Super Smash Brothers with Altair as Master Hand. But, uh, mm. all in a specific format, I guess. Mm. Yeah, well, in order to get the maximum effectiveness out of the powers that are going to be given to the good characters, um, they need a large audience for it. Yep. But as uh, what's her name, the the government agent lady mm-hmm. states, government pushed uh, functions are not <laughs> ever very popular. So it needs to be more pushed from like uh, like the the publishers or something like that. Yeah. Comic publishers, or fans, <laughs> fans, Comic Cat probably. <laughs> or was Comic Cat or. <laughs> Something that surpasses it. Yeah. Or they have to make something that surpasses Comic Head. The internet. The internet, yeah. The internet and the creators have to work together on this one. It's got to be huge. I mean, it's, it's yeah. the fate of the well, world. Well, I mean, yeah, matter. they're probably going to end up, like, streaming it worldwide or something. Yeah. Streaming the event worldwide or right something. Right out the Tokyo like Dome or some shit. Yeah. Um. But they give a, what was it, six months? Well, okay, so they're talking about the time period in order to get this done. And the government lady says it can be no no sooner than three months. Or about one anime core. Or about one anime core, conveniently. <laughs> but they, they, so they're starting out with a tentative timeline of six months to give themselves enough time for a setup. I, 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 and then I don't know it seemed like this episode in general because that's pretty much what we leave off in the anime um, actually there's one more development before the episode ends oh yeah yeah I'm outside your side she gets a new player in her on her team right <laughs> I'm sorry bro who saw this coming it's really not a shock <laughs> Um, and then, well, at the same time, uh, the illustrator already told Celestia. Yeah, he's kind of spoiled. Like, way, like total spoiler. Like, um, way, what was it, episode four? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. You know, the illustrator told Celestia that her dude totally betrays everybody and kills one of her friends. In... In the story. In the story. Yeah. Mm, at Tuberte. <laughs> and he totally comes into the world on the side of Altair. I, I think it's interesting that he's looking for somebody. Hmm. I wonder who he's looking for. I'm not sure if it Celestia, actually is I Celestia. Well, uh, yeah, I thought it would be Celestia. <laughs> Sota. Oh, God. Because Sota like already I, has a gay option, okay? It, it really depends on like what parts the dude's from, because we already we already know that uh, Celestia is from the anime of that series, and the anime of the series is not cut up to the light novels. So, if this, if the guy that we're talking about here is from the anime. Or, or not from the anime, from the uh, the light novel, way off in the future. Oh, okay. He might know a little bit more of what's going on with Celestia than Celestia knows about herself. So, the so our boy's motives here, you're saying, depend on what part of the story he came from. Yeah. So if it's later on after he decides to betray everyone, then it's naturally goes all Altair. But if it came from before that point, he wants to find Celestia to reunite with her. But yeah. he just ended up on the wrong side. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. At this point, a new one shows up, and I'm sitting here. Drifter or end? Drifter or end? <laughs> nice. 
Speaking of which, I'm so waiting for Season 2 of Love Drifters. Holy shit. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think that was... The only thing that I really wanted to say was this, ep- this and last episode... There was so much setup between these two episodes. Like, it's good setup. It's necessary setup. It has to set up. The, the, the only thing that I didn't like about the, this episode and the previous episode was how much time they gave to Setsuna's story. Mm. To, to Sota's explaining of how he killed Setsuna. Mm. I still don't agree with that, that assessment quite to that degree. Like I it's agree good. that he is he is responsible at least partially for her killing herself, but to say he killed her is wrong. I think the fans killed her. Yeah, basically yeah, okay. the, the, the trolls. The, yeah, the, the trolls who told her to go kill herself, and uh, you know just made her life miserable. Made, as she put it, she didn't even like drawing anymore. Yeah, like it wasn't fun for her anymore. Um, but the whole, like, emotion of what was going on in the room, right there at the end especially, we go from everybody being solemn, straight-faced, just listening to Sota, maybe feeling bad for him, but not really, mm-hmm. and then turning around and everybody is like, yeah, this, this is fine, we can do this plan, yeah, let's go for it. It just seemed weird. Yeah. I don't know. I didn't really get that impression. I thought they were maybe uh, a little happy that Soto was kind of coming clean about this, finally. Maybe they see it as a mark of self-improvement, and they're happy for him. You don't even get that emotion, though. Hmm. The only person that you get interacting with Sota about the whole deal is, what was it, Matsuba? The, uh, Celestia's author. Celestia's author, hmm. who's like, yeah, you're totally... I, I can. I if can, you didn't feel bad about this, I wouldn't want to talk to you. Yeah. yeah. <coughs> Which I mean, I, I guess is true. Like, <coughs> I, I can definitely see that point of view. If he didn't feel anything for what he did to Setsuna, then he would be a shitty person. Yeah. However, I still don't agree with him. You know, considering, yeah. like, considering to his to himself that he killed her. Yeah. I mean, and then at the same time, can't agree with that. But Matsuba said himself. You know, I probably would have done the same thing. Yeah, I might have done the same thing in that situation. Because it's a, a, it's a tough situation to go through. And, yeah, I feel in th- in this series, in like, from what we've seen, everybody's secretly thinking, TLDR dude. Like, Maybe that's why that happened. <laughs> yeah, like, it, it seemed so weird. And that's just my personal opinion. But, uh, yeah, I think that's about all I want to say. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that, that's really about it for this episode. Looking yeah. forward to uh, Celestia meeting her man again. It works when Meteoria does it because she's cute. You're yeah. not. <laughs> Ouch. Anyway, so let us know what you thought of the anime what you thought of our reaction in the comment section below yep thumbs up if you like it thumbs down if you don't but that's gonna do it for this episode of anime reaction I'm DK I'm Zero and I'm Rizzo see, see you next, next time. time and go ahead and click on my face to go to our most recent Otaku Saga Talks click on my face to go to Otaku Saga Gaming our gaming channel and click on the waifu to subscribe to Otaku Saga if you'd like to help support us please go ahead and check out our Patreon page <laughs>